Okay, in this video, we're going to uh, walk through an illustration of factor analysis. Um, and uh, this will use the HBAT data, and we'll use some of the variables that are represented in the, um, in, in the textbook example. But the HBAT uh, variables uh, will go with X6 through X18. And um, this will somewhat replicate what you see in the text, but also through walk through kind of how I do or would look at a uh, data analysis using factor analysis. So basically going into this, what we're thinking is that um, there is some relationship between these variables, but we're not exactly sure what they are or which variables may go together, which ones won't. Now, um, a priori, we want to look at the survey or the data source that this data is coming from and as a um, as a research scientist we need to be able to think in advance of what we think the variables will be that do go together so that we can have some expectations um, now this is not a hypothesis we're not hypothesizing we're not statistically testing or anything like that we're just on the surface or the face of it thinking about variables and Think about which ones may go together. So with this particular data, um, we uh, you know, you'll want to look at the survey and you want to think about how that's going to go. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to run this analysis. So we're going to go to analyze. Now we're going to do data reduction. <clears throat> so dimension reduction. Here we go. We're going to do factor analysis. Um, and we want to go ahead and place our variables in here. So uh, they're already in, in here. If they were uh, not in there, you would just select from your list of variables of interest. Um, and actually, I tell you what, here we want these, but we also want 15 and 17 as well. So we want all the variables from 6 all the way through 18. <clears throat> they are there. Um, if I split my data up, I could use a selection variable in here, um, but I don't have. I'm not splitting my data up right now. Descriptive data, um, data here. So, univariate descriptions would include the um, the uh, the data, uh, the 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 the. Um, the uh, the description, the you know, description of each variable. Um, we also have options: the anti-image correlation matrix, and also the KMO and Bartlett's test for sphericity as well. If you would want to do that, um, <clears throat> there's there's there. You can look at the correlation matrix among the uh, variables. So that's something that you may want to do in advance anyways, just to see um, whether the data should go together. I like to do correlation matrix matrices whenever I begin a data set. I often do a correlation matrix to see what I would expect to see what's going to happen and, and stuff. So um, you may do that or you may not. Uh, it's kind of up to you in terms of what data you want to look at initially. This data, this data here, this descriptive stuff doesn't impact, does not impact the actual mechanical function of the factor analysis anyways. <clears throat> it's just more or less for reporting basis, uh, basis anyways. Okay, uh, we're going to do a principal component uh, analysis. So we're going to do a PCA. We're going to do that. We're going to run it off a correlation matrix. Um, uh, we could ask for an unrotated and rotated uh, factor solution. We could also ask for a scree plot as well. Um, so depending on whether you do an orthogonal um, uh, rotation or not, or the type of rotation you do, um, you, you may get a rotated factor or you may not. So if you don't, then you, then you may want to check that box. Now, the eigenvalue rule, remember the, the uh, latent root, root rule of greater than one, where an eigenvalue may be greater than one, that's the number of factors that are going to be extracted initially. You can force your data or you can force your software to extract as many numbers of factors as you think are theoretically possible. Or if you, again, are using this as exploratory research, um, <clears throat> you can simply 
run your first factor analysis based on the eigenvalue greater than one rule if you if you'd like to do that that's common and again that's the kaiser rule or the eigenvalue greater than one rule based on the latent roots so we'll do that uh rotations here we have none but we want to do something vermax rotation or others um i traditionally me personally i like to use a um, pro max rotation so um, again uh, play around with this and look at the difference in the factor loadings and see if it's noticeable or uh, not and um, I think you'll be happy with a pro max rotation or a Veramax rotation one of those two um, I would I would run that um, if you want to um, save your factor scores or things like that you can do that we're not going to in this case under options we can deal with missing data by replacing a mean or excluding pairwise or listwise exclusions. I often use replace with mean, although you don't need to have it, have that. You can exclude listwise if you want. <clears throat> Other handy items here, sorting by size for me is very, very, very helpful. So I would suggest you do that. And eventually you may also want to suppress small coefficients and we'll look at that here i'll do we'll run the data two different ways one with and one without that right now we'll run it without but i'll show you that that a little later okay so we've got our variables we have our analysis at least our initial analysis items selected we went through descriptives extraction rotation scores and options now we're going to hit OK and we're going to see what the data produces for us. So we're doing a factor analysis. Here's the commonalities um, that, that's produced. We're not really worried about that so much. We are worried though about this little box here. We have our total number of um, possible factors. We have a different number for each um, variable. So we have 13 variables here. <coughs> and um, we have our total factor loadings uh, or eigenvalue loadings, which would be the percentage, the percentage of um, the percentage of variance explained by each factor loading. And again, our rule was anything above one will be treated like a factor. Okay, so that's again the latent root rule. Uh, we can also look here at our factor scores. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and then we have sort of a break, if you will, at this point uh, for, for the factors. Okay, so um, if we were doing a scree plot, we would want to look at where the break was and then count how many factors up, and it looks like there's five. Now this corresponds with the eigenvalue, so this is just barely above one. It's the, the 0.005, 1.005 here, and then we have ones that go up from there. And then basically other factors are just, just not, not, not considered here. So this analysis is going to run actually three different um, results. We'll have a component matrix, a factor matrix, and a structure matrix. Um, the and, and, and actually it's handy here to see the correlation between the factors as well. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to look here at the structure matrix or the pattern matrix, excuse me, the one in the middle here, the pattern matrix. And we're going to see that uh, we have the first factor um, and the delivery speed, complaint resolution, order billing and such. That's that kind of goes together there um, with with what we're what we've got. So um, so we have here um, a 0.952, a 0.942, and a 0.882. Other things here we've got a 5.5 and a 0.5. So these could possibly load onto factor one, but they're significantly less than these other guys. So they probably don't. We go over to factor two and we slide over here a little bit and we have 0.886, minus 0.779, 0.706, and a minus 0.657. Uh, five, five, 
Um, those seem to go together, although this 0.657 again, it kind of drops off. It's in descending order because that's what we asked it to sort by order. We have a third factor. We drop down all the way down here. We have a 0.913 and a 0.911 and then a 0.733. So those three things seem to go together. A fourth factor where we have a 0.953 and a 0.946. Those go together, and then we have our fifth factor, which only has one item. Now, that's a problem. We got uh, several things to look at here, um, actually, <clears throat> that are problematic. Number one, problematic um, fifth, fifth factor here. Um, we should not have a single item in a factor, so that's going to be a problem. We need to deal with that. We can drop that item. Um, that's one way to we could get the solution. Um, but uh, but the other item, the other issue that we have is something called a cross loading. So x17 and x11, we have a high value here and a high value, a high absolute value here. So it's, we're looking at the magnitude, and we're not worried about the sign necessarily. We also have product line. We have a 0.542 and a 0.706. Anything above a 0.4 is problematic on a cross-loading in my book. Um, so these are above 0.4. So this means that these items load on two factors at the same time. So here's the, here's the rule I like to think about. If it's above 0.6, it's worth holding on to if it's in the factor. Okay, so these 0.5s are not above. They, they don't ma make the, that rule so they would not be contained within this point one. However, cross loadings of point four or higher to me are dangerous. So point six to retain, point four to cross load. That's my rule that I think about. Now earlier when we were running the um, we were setting up the actual factor analysis, um, there was an option that we did not check that I want to show you. Okay, so you see this full matrix here. We're going to go to Analyze. We're going to go to Dimension Reduction. We're going to go to Factor. We're going to all everything here is the same except that I'm going to go to Options and I'm going to suppress small coefficients. The things that are, are are going to be suppressed will be anything below a 0.4. So absolute value below a 0.4 is going to be suppressed. So I'm going to continue. And I'm going to just do OK. And I want you to look and see what happens. We have the same commonalities, the same total variance explained, the same eigenvalues. We have the same scree plot. But now when we go down this pattern matrix, we have a whole bunch of empty space because anything below 0.4 is left out. So what this does is basically clean up the, the picture for us so that we can make a better kind of visual image of what's going on. We have a single item here on five, which is problematic, and we have these cross loadings here that are problematic. This number 13 is, is really a six, five, seven. It's acceptable, but it's not great within this context here. And then we have our, our other data that, that's, that's going on there. So what do we do? Um, okay, one thing we can do is we can force a four-factor solution instead of a five-factor solution. Okay, uh, so we may think that this variable should be kept and that it should go with something else. So we can go to Analyze, Dimension Reduction, Factor, when we go into extraction, instead of saying based on one, we could say we want a four-factor solution. Okay, so in other words, we're ignoring this rule and we're telling the software that we believe we should have four factors instead of five. And we can run the data again and we can see what kind of shakes out. <clears throat> now, this is telling because this new factor or this, this new products it is does not have a score above above 0.4 on any factor it does not load it does not load unless it's its own factor so that means that we need to drop it okay we need to drop x15 that this this variable does not go with any of the others so 
we're going to go back to dimension reduction. We're going to go back to factor. We're going to go in here. We're going to find wherever 15 is and we're going to take it out. Now, when I take it out, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go back to extraction and I'm going to go back to my eigenvalue greater than one rule. Now, this is just a researcher playing with the data, um, exploring. Okay, so that's kind of, I'm going to go, I did that extraction change to test that one variable. The variable does not hold anywhere. So now I'm going to go back, go do extraction, I'm going to do the Kaiser rule, I'm going to go take 15 out, I'm going to run the analysis again. Now, using the eigenvalue greater than one rule, we have a different set of eigenvalues because we took out a variable. We only have 12 now instead of 13. So we've got a different scree plot. Note that we have a much stronger degree of angle here and a much clearer break. That's a good sign. That means we're converging now. On, our our data is converging better. I'm going to go back to a pattern matrix and we are going to look at this stuff going on here. We have uh, again, uh, we have the exact same data structure here, um, and we have these guys that are cross-loading, and we got this. Now, if I took out these cross-loading items, that would be, oh boy, if I took out these two cross-loaded items, then I'd lose my second component, my second factor, because I wouldn't have them here. So that's pretty dramatic to do that. Now, what I can do is I can try that. I can try taking out a couple of these and seeing what shakes out. I already know, though, that this variable x13 is probably a little lower than I would like. It is uncharacteristically lower than the rest of the data. So this is, so, you know, a 0.6 is okay to retain as long as it holds and doesn't cross load and doesn't do anything crazy. But um it seems out of character so i'm going to play around i'm going to take it out and just see what happens because i can um right so i'm going to take x what was it x13 i'm going to try taking x13 out run the data just see what happens mm, okay this is not as convincing as i would like uh, there's still a clear break here. Um, what happens down below here? Yeah, that's that's not that's not so cool. Uh, I've still got some issues going on here with with my data. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to take that and put it back in because again, because I can. So x13, I'm going to put x13 back in there. Um, another problem that we were having before, when we looked at this, when we ran this before, was this x17, because it's a minus there, that might be squirrely. Um, sometimes when you look at, at a reversed sign, sometimes that would be problematic. So I'm going to take x17 out and see if that helps us out a little bit. Um, again, we've got our four factors, so that's kind of, whoops, yep, we got our four factors. We're going to go down here to the pattern matrix, and we still have an issue with product line. Now it's, it's even worse here. It's actually not good at all. Um, so that's a little problematic there. So I don't like that one bit. Um, so let's add 17 back into the mix and keep trying to see what we can do. So I'm going to put 17 back into there. Uh, we go back to what we had before, and we've got these factors. All right, so we may have to live with the fact that we have um, cross loadings, okay? That just might be something like a reality that we deal with. Um, or we could run without these variables altogether, or we can just kind of see what's going to go on here. So one thing we can do now is we can actually look at our reliabilities, and we'll look at our reliabilities of a, a few of these. So like factor number one, we're not going to keep these 17 and 11 in there. Uh, we're not going to keep those as factor number one. They're, they're ugly. So we're not gonna we're not gonna have those. And actually, factor number one and factor number two correlate. They don't correlate hardly at all, even the way they are. So 
I'm not going to keep factor uh, 17 and 11 in factor number one, but I do want to know what the reliability is like. It's going to be high, I can tell, just because it looks good. Uh, so we're going to do 9, 16, and 18. So the way we do reliabilities is we go to Analyze, Scale, Reliability. And we're going to do, uh, what did we say here, 18, 9, I know it was in there, and then 16. So we're going to pop those in there. Uh, let's just do OK and see what happens. OK, we've got a Cronbox Alpha of 8, 9, 7. What would happen, <coughs> excuse me, if I included in that, uh, 11 and 17. Let's just look and see what would happen if we included 11 and 17 in there. Um, and uh, just just for as an illustration, we're going to do OK. We added those in there. The Cronbach's alpha dropped a whole a whole a whole point, like went from almost 0.9 to 0.778 basically. Okay, so that draw. So we added the number of items. Now, uh, one of the tricks here you can do is actually you can do scale, reliability, and under statistics, you can check the box scale if item is deleted. And so we do that. And this is kind of cool because what it does is it will tell you what your reliability will be if you delete an item. So we have a five variable factor here with a Cronbach's alpha of 0.78, which by the way is above our benchmark of 0.7. But if we took out X17, we could actually achieve a 0.856. So that's actually, so so that would, you know, so we can actually let our reliability help drive our factor analysis here too. So if I dropped X17, from our, our reliability uh, measure here, take it out. We're going to run Cronbach's alpha again. We got the 0.856 now, and we dropped that. And again, if we dropped 11, we'd get back to that 0.897, which we had before. So, so this is actually kind of helpful for us to check reliability while we're moving through this process. Um, it is a little exploratory, um, so we could do this for um, for pattern matrix for um, factor one, factor three, factor four. Interestingly, with factor two, we have some reverse coded items. So let me show you um, if we do reliability and we do some of these reverse coded items. Um, usually, what happens is we have problems with with doing that. So if we do six, seventeen, a 6, 17, 11, uh, 17, if we do the item 6, 17, 11, and 13, boom, boom, boom. We're going to do it, and reliability is negative 0.932. Okay, so the value is negative due to negative average covariances. This violates a liability model assumptions and you may want to check your loading so yeah the reason why is because we have some reverse coded items so this may not be a great uh, we, we can't we can't really report this we need to reverse code our items and then rerun the Cronbach's alpha and confirm that it's going to be going to be good see because this is really really weird we drop some items here and Cronbach's alpha does nutty things so um, we can't have a negative number there. Alpha can't be negative. Um, it shouldn't be. And so we have to address that in a slightly different way. OK, so um, basically what we're dealt with here is uh, an, interesting, an interesting issue uh, because we have these, these, um, these items that really kind of confound the whole the whole system here. So let's drop 11 and 17 and let's just see what shakes out now if we drop both 11 and 17 together. Um, I can't remember if we did that or not. So we're going to drop both uh, 17 and 11 out of the analysis. 
we're still going to uh, run with an eigenvalue greater than 1. We still have these options where we're going to suppress values and we're going to sort by size just to clean it up, just to make things look pretty as we're, anal as we're analyzing this. We're going to run it. We're going to get a four-factor solution. We have a scree plot going for us there. And then we have this, <clears throat> this pattern matrix, which is pretty clean and concise. So, um, you know, this is probably what I'd run with, um, actually, um, if I was gonna if I was gonna do this. Um, it's uh, you know, quality and pricing are often related negatively to each other, so that's kind of intuitive, right? Um, so the the better the quality, the higher the price. Which uh, so if you say well, competitive pricing means your price low. So a low price does not necessarily go with high quality. They're they're, they're opposite of each other. They're in they're they're negatively related. So we have a negative relationship going on, going on there. So I I need to reverse code probably that competitive pricing so that I get get it positive so there would be a, a plus 0 0.704 uh, or, or something something around that that would be it and I'd have a four-factor solution and this is what I would go with okay so that's how I would do this factor analysis for this data set um, it's uh, a little bit of trial and error and it's a whole lot of um, just seeing what your data will do and what makes sense um, we can go from here and we can assess our average variance extracted uh, for each component. So we take our eigenvalue and divide by the number of um, items. So this first eigenvalue is 3.086 divided by 3 because we have three items in this first one. So our average variance extracted is, um, it's well, it's high. It's, it's much higher than you would normally have. You need something above point, um, uh, 0.5 or 6 or something like that. So we're, we're good. We're good on all of these, I believe. Um, these, other, these last two are a little squirrely. And the reason why is because you typically need at least one, at least three items per factor. So while we can do this, we would ideally want more than just two factors. And we would report um, the correlation between those two, um, which would make more sense. So we'd actually take the correlation of these guys um, and we would, we would report that. Uh, so we got eight and 14 there, analyze, we can go to scale, we can go to reliability, and we're actually gonna put eight and 14 in here uh, because that's what we were running with. So we got 8 and 14, which we're calling a factor, but we can also ask for the correlation here. Um, so that's our inner item correlation. That's what we probably want right there. We don't need this scale if items uh, deleted. We're going to do that. We're going to do OK. So uh, the Cronbach's alpha is the same as the correlation. You notice that virtually the same. It's almost the same. And the proper thing to do in research is to actually report the correlation of two items, not the, not the alpha. Uh, and like I said, they're virtually the same thing. <clears throat> okay, so um, this has been kind of a quick and dirty uh, review of a factor analysis. There are other examples online. Uh, so uh, what you can do is actually play around with the data, follow the textbook, use the examples, explore the notion of factor analysis, and above all, have some fun with it.